Hello everybody, how's it? This is Uncle Russ coming to you live from X Cafe on Koh Samui in Thailand. Just a quick reminder, remember you can message, message me directly even while I'm busy with my 15 minutes with Uncle Russ. So I'm going to sing us a little song. Oh, by the way, how was your week? <laughs> we had quite a week. What an exciting week we've had. Um, my documentation arrived from South Africa, you know, and so we're off to get all of that sorted out. But God's, you know, He's always a God that is on time. Because it literally 48 hours <laughs> left on the clock. So God is so kind to us, you know. Hey, what do you think? Always on time, he's never late, never early. And I'm going to sing us a little old school song, You Are My Hiding Place. So, so where do you hide when you're in trouble? I know sometimes when we get depressed, we hide in the dark room with a bowl of ice cream and an omnibus of series and, you know, the list goes on and on. But where, where are we supposed to hide? So I'm going to sing us this song. You can sing along with me. For you that are a bit long in the teeth, you'll know the song. And it is an old song. In you. Amen. Don't put your trust in chariots. Don't put your trust in horses. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So, I've got such a cool story. But this is a little edgy. I'll tell you why it's edgy. Because some of you may feel I've crossed the line. That's what you're going to think. <laughs> but when you see what I'm trying to explain, then you'll understand why I use this story. So, I have found myself in many an embarrassing situation. You know, <laughs> there's a friend of mine from long ago, we were all sitting in church, and uh, he sat just in front of me, I won't name him, you'll know who it is. Anyhow, so we were sitting in this church, and they had these plastic chairs, white chairs, and he was sat in front of me. And uh, I saw him lift his one hip up slightly. <laughs> yeah, and the preacher had just got to a kind of a pause between two, two statements, when all of a sudden there was a rumble in the jungle. And he didn't say anything. I just saw his shoulders shake like that as he had a good old chuckle. So this is what my story is about. I actually wasn't going to add that in, but I only just remembered now. The dog did it. <laughs> You know those embarrassing moments when a little sneaky should have been a sneaky squeaky and it's a thunderous, yeah. So, now that's why I said to you, you're going to think, Russell, you have stepped over the mark. Not really. Because if you see where I'm going with this thing, you'll understand. You know, so we've all been... <laughs> Vulnerable and a little exposed. Eh? I mean, you can be on the bus, you can be in public, you know, and if you're on your own, doesn't matter. I mean, you know, woo! <laughs> but how, how does this make any sense? So, you will see where I'm going with this. I want to read to us from Genesis chapter 3, and it's in verse 4 to 13. Now we all know it well, and please don't switch off, because I want, I want us to listen to this. Then the serpent said to the woman, 
You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took up its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then both the, of the, and then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. Yeah. Then they sewed figs together and made themselves covering. And when and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the woman, then the man said, the woman whom you, you, you gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. The dog did it. <laughs> you see? And here you can see the first thing they do when they make the mistake, they try to cover up. Yes. I mean, you've been running around naked from the day you were created and suddenly you, re you realize that you're naked. That's weird. Yes. So, they covered up instead of taking responsibility and accountability. All they needed to do was repent and say, Lord, yes, we disobeyed you. We're really sorry, you know, but uh, please forgive us, you know. What can we say? We got caught. <laughs> we got caught. Yes. It's like the story of that guy who was in court. And uh, the magistrate said to him, So, why are you here? And he said, Your Honor, you know, police brutality and the system is up against me. And the magistrate said, Do tell, do tell. He says, Well, they arrested me for taking a piece of rope. And the, the magistrate looked a bit puzzled and rope. And that's when the prosecutor said, yes, your honor, but there was a car tied to the other side of the rope. Ah, see, we need to tell the whole truth, not parts of the truth. So, like Adam and Eve, who do we blame for our disobedience and sins? Oh, man. Are we famous for that? Yes, some things. We always seem to be ready and to assign blame to someone or something. Why have you said, no, Your Honor? It's the lifestyle of those living around me. You know, they influenced me and that is why I became that. Yes. Why are you taking drugs and why are you drinking so much alcohol? Well, you need to understand, my mother abandoned me when I was a young boy. And then my father brought me up, so he beat me up and so the foster care system got hold of me. And then I went from pillar to post and pillar to post. And that's why I have 10 kilos of cocaine that you caught me with that I've been dealing with. <laughs> oh my gosh. Your poor dad, I think he slapped you around a few times, but don't blame him for the 10 kilos. Extramarital relationships. Why did you cheat on me? Well, you need to understand, you know, I feel that you don't love me. I feel you don't affirm me enough. I feel 
And we get this whole list of I feel and what I think and what I believe to justify the fact that I jumped into the sack with another person. The dog did it. Misappropriation of funds. Oh man, that is so... Oh. It has become the norm. I remember a story where a politician had to explain to Parliament where 30 million of that currency disappeared. And after a brief pause, they just said, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, <laughs> the entire assembly got up and applauded them for their honesty. <laughs> My question is, where is the 30 million? Did you return it? Ah. So you know there are lots of people misappropriating funds from government officials to people in the business, you know, taking a little bit of the cream off the top because you deserve it. You know how my boss treats me and I'm sick and tired of being underpaid and being overworked. So if I take a bit from the top, you know, we make all things equal. No, you're a thief. Corruption. Why are you corrupt? Well, you know, as a government official or an officer of, of the court or whatever it is, it's very hard, you know. We don't get paid well. We are un, unappreciated. We have people flinging abuse at us every day, trying to harm us, trying to hurt us. And you know, I have a family to support. So, you know, if I make a little bit on the side, it makes sense. Okay, so it's not like breaking a big law. It's a little, you know, it's a little, little break of the law. Social behavior. Why are you acting like a complete moron? In the rugby match, which we saw you on TV, where you had your pot belly come out and your man boobs, as you pulled your top over your head and then you scream and you ran down and you streaked across the field and then on Monday morning when you sit in the boardroom you're telling people how they should perform and how they should act and how and you say but why did you do that? I'm sorry I, I, I got caught up in the moment <laughs> I got caught up in the moment yeah, not a good moment, because not only did you get caught up on the moment, but you got caught up on the moment on, on the international feed of television. You're going to lose your credibility, my friend. Oh, uh, you know. So why do you keep beating up your wife? Well, you know, I'm a victim of abuse. <laughs> Come on. If you're a victim of abuse, the last thing you should be do doing is abusing somebody else. Surely. I mean, how do we stop the cycle of abuse unless we the ones that put up our hands and say, it stops here. But why did you do it? That wasn't me, it was the dog. The dog did it. So now you can see why I used the story of my little pooch over here. The dog did it. You know what? We can see the example of Adam and Eve where God was very specific is in command and instruction to them. And what happened? They chose, they chose the lust of the eye. They chose not to listen. They chose to encourage each other to eat and participate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. They chose to make a decision 
But the problem was they didn't take the responsibility and they didn't want to be accountable for the decision that they made. What decisions have you made? What have you done that has caused you to be in a compromised position? You know what the most amazing thing is? Not just saying, I'm sorry. Because you see, if that woman was really sorry, firstly, she would return the money. And secondly, she would steal no more. See, when Jesus spoke to that woman caught in the act of adultery, he didn't lambaste her. He said, go and sin no more. And the best way not to find yourself in a compromised situation is not to put yourself in a compromising situation. Be careful when you lift up your right hip on a plastic chair because it may come out a lot louder than what you expected. Careful what you say when you open your mouth without thinking about it because you might be sorry about what comes out because whatever's in your heart will come out of your mouth. You need to learn to le listen and think and ponder before we make these decisions. If it's somebody at work that's really giving you the eyes, telling you what a handsome guy you are and you're so kind and you're so this, be careful. It's the th You know, uh, if, if you're one of those gym buddies, uh, ladies, and you go in there and your instructor's telling you, you know, you're really looking great and in great shape and your dedication and, and your husband doesn't seem to notice who you are and what you're doing, be careful. If you're at work and there's a pile of money in the top and nobody's looking, <laughs> yes, be careful. If you're feeling depressed and you need a little pick-me-up, you know a little, <laughs> or a little bit of doobie, don't. Be careful. We sang that song earlier on, You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Where are you putting your trust at the moment? In lies, in cover-ups, in excuses, or are you taking responsibility and accountability for the decisions you make? Thank you so much for spending time with us. This is Uncle Russ signing off until we meet again. And remember, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Goodbye for now.